As Christians, we can talk a good game, but when it's time to put our money where our mouth is, how well do we do? Over the past two Sundays, I've posed three questions, and uh, commitment is at the core of each one, and the real test is in our follow-through, when our faith becomes action. So here's the three questions again. First of all, how consistently and comprehensively are you willing to pray? Question number two, how far are you willing to go? And then the last question, how much are you willing to give? We also ask one more question that's foundational to each. What is God calling you to do? For some, the answer might be easy. You've settled this. No equivocation, no negotiating, no stalling. But there may be others listening today who've not resolved this issue. You don't know what God's calling you to do. So it's my prayer through this short series that you've gotten a glimpse of the pray and the go pieces to God's call. And there's one more important aspect to saying yes to God. J.C. Ryle once wrote, a giving Savior should have giving disciples. But here's the deal. Money doesn't lead. Now I'm going to say it again, okay? Money doesn't lead. It doesn't open doors or expand ministries. It doesn't focus on the needs of your church or your community. Money can't understand the vital role of giving and giving back, but you do. Biblical faith challenges believers to to live abundantly. That's what Jesus' promise was. He said, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So listen to how Paul urged the Corinthian believers in 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Check this out. He says, since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. The priority of the church is still the Great Commission. That will not change. Going into the world, preaching the gospel. Okay, but we must share Christ wherever we are. And, we, share, we said this last week, we've got to keep sending others to go where we cannot go. Over the past two weeks, I've shared that every believer at Calvary is a missionary. Our missionary calling is to pray, to go, and here's the third part, to give so that others can go. We've covered the first two parts of our calling, to pray and to go. Now, now let's get to this, this third part of our missionary calling, to give. All right, and, and as we talk about this, I, I just want you to, to remind you that your investment in kingdom work, any investment that you make in kingdom work will always bring a return. That's not based on the amount of our investment. It's based on, on the principle of God keeping his promises. See, there's no worthier cause than funding the gospel message. Three giving principles. Let, I, I just want to take these straight from Scripture, okay? And we're going to start in Paul's instruction to the Corinthians again. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Here's the principle. When we give, needs are met. And 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1. Let's start there. Now, regarding your question about the money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, you should follow the same procedure that I gave to the churches in Galatia. On the first day of each week, you should put aside a portion of the money you've earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. You see, Paul is encouraging the Corinthians to to give, to meet needs. And, And For us, the needs are as varied as the missionaries and ministries that God has called to work in the harvest. Supporting them on a regular basis meets needs. When we give to missions, it helps to meet their needs and it helps them to remain at what God has called them to do. The the worst thing that a missionary uh, has to do is in the middle of their term of, of service, which in the Assemblies of God might be four or five years, sometimes six years, is to have to come home and fundraise because uh, because their giving has dropped. So look, when we give, it helps to meet needs. Here's the second biblical principle. God loves a cheerful giver. Did you listen, God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians, again, Paul gives this instruction to the same church. 2 Corinthians 9, we're going to start at verse 6. All right, hang with me here. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. He says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. 
You must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. In other words, stop right there, because this is God's response. When we give generously, then God will generously meet all our needs. He says, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Verse 9, as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. And in the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two good things will result. Paul says, two good things will result from this ministry of giving. First, the needs of the believers in Jerusalem will will be met. And number two, they will joyfully express their thanks to God. I heard a a, a story about a businessman who needed millions of dollars to clinch an important deal. So he went to the church to pray for money. And by chance, he knelt uh, at the altar next to a man who was praying for $100 to pay an urgent debt. The businessman overheard his prayer and took out his wallet and pressed $100 into the man's hand. Overjoyed, the man got up and he ran out of the church. And the businessman then closed his eyes and prayed this, Okay, Lord, now that I have your undivided attention. See, friends, when we give, we aren't making a quid pro quo deal with God. In other words, I'll do for you if you do for me. We give with open hands, trusting God with the return on our investment. Here's the third principle. When we give, we show God is the owner and we are the stewards. We are his stewards. Shifting to 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul gives this instruction to his young protege. In verse 17, he says, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And then verse 18, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. I know I I heard you say it, wait, pastor, wait, 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 I'm not rich. Well, uh, interesting that you bring that up uh, because last summer uh, we spent some time in Andy, Andy Stanley's book, How to Be Rich. And in it, he draws the primary passage right here from 1 Timothy chapter 6. And in that that study, he said this, rich is a moving target. No matter how much money we have or make, we'll probably never consider ourselves rich. The biggest challenge facing rich people is that they've lost their ability to recognize that they're rich. In other words, being rich is relative. So let, let's, let's make it realistic. Let's put it this way. If you make anywhere near $37,000 a year, you are in the top 4% of wage earners in the world. That's if you make $37,000, you are in the top 4% of wage earners in the world. That's what Paul means when he says, by, when, when he says rich in this world. See, the bottom line, what we have doesn't even belong to us. It belongs to God. And we're just his stewards. It only makes sense to invest God's resources where God's work is. Let me say it again. Invest God's resources where God's work is. It's always easier and it's more fun to be generous with someone else's money. I, I, I was in a service one time, and, and the, the pastor was, was uh, receiving the offering, and he said, hey, lean over and take your neighbor's wallet and give what you've always wanted to. See, when, we're, when we give out of what we call our resources, really we're giving out of God's resources. That's why we can be generous. And that's, that's, what, that's what you're doing when you tithe and when you give to missions, so I, I, I hear you saying something else here. Uh, you're asking me to give, you're asking me to give, Pastor, you're asking me to give with all the uncertainty that's going on in this world? And my answer is yes. And if we don't give, what does that reveal about who we are or what we have our trust in? Who's our true source? 
But when we give faithfully, consistently, generously, we are in effect declaring that Jesus is our source. So I'm asking you to honor and trust God in what you give. The, the amount really isn't as important as, ha, as how much you're willing to trust God. See, we get fixated on amounts, but God's not concerned with the amount. He, we just bring what we have, place it in his hands, and trust him. Again, your investment in kingdom work will always bring a return. The return is up to him. What we give effectively funds great commission work around the world. So let me ask you this. Are you, are you waiting for God to tell you what to give? Would hearing the needs inspire you? So I, I, brought, this, I, I brought this morning some, some of the needs that, um, that have come across my desk just in the last two weeks. I, I, on Friday, I've got a, I, I got a packet of information from uh, young missionaries by the name of Caleb and Bethany Halbert. They're raising money to go to Azerbaijan where 90% of the people living there have no hope of hearing the truth of Jesus. So Caleb, Caleb and Bethany Halbert, uh, we got a phone call on, on, here at the church from, from a missionary by the name of Kelly, who, who's a missionary to Honduras and uh, was, was looking for support. Uh, we have, uh, we've got uh, Russ and Sarah Farhood, who are, miss, who are missionaries to Equatorial Guinea, uh, and they're, they're raising uh, their funds. Uh, Steve and Rhonda Wilson, who are missionaries to Chile, who are career missionaries to Chile, but, but this is what they wrote. Today I'm writing to you asking for your help. Rhonda and I have been missionaries for over 30 years, and we're looking forward to returning to Chile for a brand new term. Then the pandemic hit, and now we find ourselves in a critical moment. We are lacking in pledges and out of cash. If we don't raise $1,000 in pledges and $25,000 in cash, it is likely that we will not be able to continue as missionaries. We need you to step into the breach with us one more time. Together we can do this. That, that, that's uh, Steve and Rhonda Wilson. I got, uh, I got a request from the Moyers, who, who are missionaries to, to Belgium, and they're specifically... Uh, going to be working with uh, Chinese students at a university, uh, universities there in Belgium, uh, the Moyers. Uh, I, I got a request from um, from a missionary, a home missionary, asking for for support to minister to the Rosebud. Uh, reservation, uh, Native Americans, and asking uh, if we would take them as part of, of, of our missionary team. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a request from the Gray family who are, who are missionaries to Italy. They, they're, they're partnering with a local church to reach children and youth in Italy, the Grays. I got, uh, I've got a request uh, from uh, Teen Challenge, who was supposed to be here today, Chad's Hope, and they, uh, they, they desperately need, they need uh, uh, it, here's what it says. It says, Chad's Hope needs $5,000 more a month, per month, to operate. So they're looking for more partners to step up. Uh, that's Chad's Hope Teen Challenge. Um, I got I to learn from the, Nash, the Nashes, and um, these are, we don't support any of these missionaries. These are just missionaries that are looking for support. The, the Nashes are, are, are hoping to go to Botswana, Africa, and, and they're, they're, they're asking for partners that will support them in their missionary work. Uh, I, got, I got a request from uh, Bob and Lindsay Clayton, who are, who are going uh, to Mongolia, and they're, they're looking for support as well, from uh, Rick and Gloria McCartney, uh, who are missionaries to Wales. They're, they're looking for help. Uh, I've got, uh, I got a, a text the other day from uh, One Day to Feed the World, Convoy of Hope, and they're, they're asking us to support Convoy of Hope with a Thanksgiving offering. Uh, there's a local ministry to the homeless uh, called uh, Homeless Intervention Services. They need support. Uh, there's there's Chi Alpha. There's listen, listen. Here's the thing. Uh, I I get emails almost every 
almost every week I get emails from missionaries. Um, we could talk about the home missions. I got, I got an email to the, this week, or a letter this week, asking from the home missions office for a Christmas offering for home missionaries. We got a request for the affordable Christmas through Helping Hand of Hope or the Child Evangelism Fellowship Christmas offering. They're, look, the needs are just absolutely staggering. And, and I, I, I got to tell you, folks, it, it breaks my heart because I've got a file full of these things over the last few months, uh, full of these needs. And there's no way, there's no way that we can meet all those needs. And so it's, it's, it's almost, it, it is beyond us. It's beyond where our finances are right now. But here's the thing. When we put our offering, listen, I want you to know this. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by this because we're doing what we can. But, the, but because the needs are great, listen, we need to remember that whenever we put our offering, whenever we give to the Lord and we put it in God's hands, like the, like the boy with the five loaves and two fish, God can do more with what we give than what we can. I heard the story about a missionary who was serving overseas. Her name was Deborah. Not longer after she arrived back in the United States for her home leave, she learned that one of her neighbor's sons had been seriously injured. The family had no insurance and was suffering financially as well as physically. So concerned about the situation, Deborah went into her bedroom to pray. Here's what she prayed. Lord, what would you have me to do? What do you want me to do, God? And she sensed a nudge from the Lord to give her neighbor some money. So she checked her bank balance and, and she realized that it was only $200. That's how much money she had in the bank. So, so she prayed, I, I, probably feeling a little magnanimous, Lord, I, how about $25? Okay, that's more than a tithe on what was in, 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 the, uh, in the bank. So with $175 left over, she felt that she could survive for the rest of the month. But as she quietly waited on the Lord, she felt the Lord say, no, I want you to give $100. This is her testimony. I choked. I choked a bit. That was half of what I had. So I continued to question the Lord. I, I had no peace about, but I had no peace about anything less than $100. So finally, she said, I wrote the check, breathing a prayer. Here's the prayer. Now I've done what you said, Lord, so you'll have to take care of my needs. And with a sense of joy and expectancy, Deborah took the check across the street to her neighbors. And with that act of sharing, she greatly encouraged the family and God kept his word. Because two days later, a check for $100 came in the mail. Three days later, a woman dropped by her home with a check for $200, something that, that this woman had wanted to do for some time. Listen to what Deborah wrote. Within five days of writing my check, I received from unexpected sources a total of $500. I stood in awe of God and his ways. Now, friends, that is the adventure of giving by faith. Giving by faith. Now, now I, don't, I don't believe that that's, all, that's a normative experience, okay, that where, where we give 100 and get $500 back. Uh, again, that's not our heart. Our heart is not to give and expect in, in return. That's quid pro quo. We, that's not how we give. We give generously, trusting God to meet the needs of those that we're giving to and trusting God to meet our needs. That's the adventure of giving by faith. This September, we celebrated Calvary's 40th anniversary. And to the best of my knowledge and research, in the past 40 years, Calvary has given well over $500,000 to missions. That's over a half a million dollars to missions. And if you've given at Calvary, you've been a part of that. And that's, that is absolutely worth celebrating. But what we gave in the past doesn't help our missionaries today. The, this file full of missionaries, it doesn't help them today. I, I'm going to tell you, friends, and I'm being honest as your pastor, there's an immediate way that you can respond today, and you can do that through the 2021 Faith Promise Pledge. That is, that is making a pledge for giving to missions and offering every month above and beyond your tithe. It represents a monthly commitment to our missionaries and ministries. And that faith promise card, that faith promise card is going to, is going to bless 
uh, missionaries, the missionaries we support, the ministries that we support. They're counting on us to support them, not just in prayer, but in giving. We give so they can go. But I want, to, I want to be honest about where we're at. Our current monthly commitment to missionaries and, and mission ministries is over $1,900, $1,900 a month. Over the past nine months of, of the COVID pandemic, our mission giving has been the only number that has dropped. We're averaging right now, over the last few months, we're averaging about $1,200 a month. So that's a $700 difference, okay? And, and uh, our we, we decided a long time ago that we would not use general fund money. We had a surplus, so we were able to, to help our missionaries, but we have, we have uh, used up all of that surplus. And now we're at a place where the general fund can't step in and, and make up the difference. So, so we're left with the unenviable task of either reducing what we give to our missionaries or even dropping some of our missionary support or ministries that we support. We don't want to do that, friends. So I'm asking you to pray right now. I'm asking you by faith to pledge to give something to missions, to monthly. Now, now um, we're, we're not yet sure uh, if you're, if you're going to have this in your hands uh, uh, as you're listening to me speak today or if it's going to be in a few weeks, but I want you to be praying about what you're going to give above and beyond your tithe, what you're going to give to missions. And and I want you to pray with me right now. Uh, Let's do that right now. Come on, would you join me? Heavenly Father, we just come to you and we are so blessed. We realize, God, even if we don't make $37,000 a year, we realize, God, that living in America, we are blessed. When we consider how so many, God, the majority of people in the world live so far below, Lord, to what we would call the poverty line, God, we're, we live in a, in a country that has plenty. Even in the midst of this pandemic, God, even in the midst of all the things that have happened, God, you have blessed us. You've provided for us. You've met our needs. So God, out of that blessing, we don't want to be a reservoir that just holds on to it. God, we want to be a stream. We want to be a conduit, God, so that if you bless us, we can bless others. So God, if you provide for us, we want to be able to give and provide for others. God, I, I I want my life to be marked by generosity. I don't want to be tight-fisted. I don't want to I don't want to worry over this because it's not mine to begin with. It belongs to you. So as I invest God in missions and missionary work, God, I believe that this is that this is the third part of my calling that I I'm, I'm to pray. God, and I want to be faithful to do that. That I'm to go and I want to be faithful in that aspect. But God, I also know that, that you're calling me to give, and I want to be faithful in giving as well. So God, I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm going to trust you. This is an act of faith, God, to, to trust you, to continue to provide, continue to meet the need, and God, I, I'm going to pledge today to give to missions in, in through the remainder of this year and into the new year. God, we want our missionaries, not just the ones we support right now, not just the ministries we support right now, but Lord, Lord, we want to take on new missionaries. We want to be able to provide for, for the many needs that, that exist right now. Some that are local ministries, Lord, like CEF or, or, uh, or like uh, Mission Hope for Kids or uh, Helping Hand of Hope. God, we want, we want to be a part of that. But God, we know that that, that this is going to require something of us. So find us faithful, God. You're faithful. You are faithful to provide. You're faithful to meet our needs. Find us faithful, God, to respond, to be givers, to fulfill this part of our calling. We ask this because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So what if your giving was all it would take to bring someone to Jesus. Here's what missiologists tell us, okay? Missiologists tell us that it takes, on average, about a dollar fifty. For every dollar fifty that you give to missions, someone gets saved. That's like investing in a soul for a dollar fifty, okay? So what what would it be like for you to know that what you give, the result of what you give is to bring someone to Christ? I, I know somebody's out there being cynical. Well, that's not the reality, Pastor. There's more factors that are involved. But what if their salvation depended on your giving? Just what if? What if our missionary's effectiveness depended on your monthly faith promise commitment? I'm telling you, it does. It does. 
So friends, if, if there is, a, if there is a, an attribute that we want to have as a, a personally, but also corporately, don't you want to be known as a generous person? Don't we want to be known as a generous church? So let's make a pledge. Let, let's, let's pray. Commit it to the Lord, okay? Listen, just like that missionary Deborah did. Listen to what the Lord is directing, okay? And, and you put a number down in faith, and you trust God to provide. And you trust God to meet that need, and he will, okay? Out of our heart of generosity, out of a heart of generosity, okay, personally and corporately, I believe that need, every need can be met, okay? Our missionaries are counting on us. The ministries that we support, they're counting on us. So let's fulfill this third part of our missionary commitment, okay? Our missionary calling. Let's pray, let's go, and let's give. Thank you, guys. It, I, I'm, I'm praying for you, and I can't wait to see what, how we respond as a church to the needs that, that we're facing. Thank you so much for, for letting me uh, share with you in this way today. Uh, God bless you.